what people need me for is I'm the icebreaker. Mm -hmm. I'm the front and I beat the bullies out of the way. <laughs> I, I, I pave the way. And then behind me, there's a whole army. And they are all Im immensely talented and amazing. But they, they don't have the ability to go ahead. And I'm not afraid to do that. That's not, but I don't want to be the, that leader. I just want to be the guy that opens the doors. And then the floodgates come and I stand back. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. We're back with Doc for installment number two. Thank you for giving us your time, my good friend. And uh, I think it's I think it's apropos to refer to you as my good friend because we just got talking in the first segment in regards to the fact that we are more than colleagues. We are mm -hmm. friends. And there is, I have to, there might be a chance some people think that we're not friends considering the uh -oh. way that court case went. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. You were on different sides. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah. I was the prosecutor, essentially. I was. You were trying to bury him. Yes. Well, I oh. was representing Cleo, who was suing him for the intentional infliction of emotional distress. And he was uh, on def defense and his <laughs> attorney was uh, Joe. And so we, we had a good time. Don't you think? We are friends, right? Right. You're good. Dude, talking about, you know, taking this stuff seriously. There isn't all right when you did your opening statement, right? And I deliberately never switch perspective. I don't use camera movements. I yeah. I want the audience to have my experience. And I tell you, I thought I was cooked, man. When you're done with the opening statement, I thought I'm done. Like I literally, my heart sank. I sat there and you keep on talking and there's this pattern of intimidation. It's like, oh my God, he's got me. I am so done. <laughs> you know, and then Joe comes up and then like things went like, I mean, you know, he's talking about Osaphagus and, and, and. What? Yeah. yeah dude, uh, uh, it's like uh, his argumentation pretty much boiled down to I'm just a big baby. And <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Zombie Cleo mistreated me, bro. You, did you, you did you and Joe talk at all about what his defense was going to be? Did yeah, you agree to this? The, 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 the day prior, right, he calls me up and says, hey, Doc, you know, I have to <laughs> chat something to you about the court case. I was really preparing well and blah, blah, blah. Right, and I said, okay, and he stands in front of me and, you know, I just see like, wah, 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 wah. I checked out to 30 seconds, right? Like, but it's, <laughs> the only thing that got stuck to my mind is, you know, we're going to plead. Uh, plead insanity, I think. And so he didn't say anything about babies. Man, yeah. <laughs> like, no. it was a so <laughs> there. All of a sudden, he goes, like, Yeah, in the end, he's just a big crybaby. He's like, yeah. What? This is not helping. <laughs> How is this helping? And, uh, you know, it, uh, yeah, and it escalated from there. The cross examination, man, at one point, right, we had vintage beef on there. And like uh, Skiz is grilling him like, you know, like a real lawyer, like really like, you know, that Joe comes up and talks some crazy stuff about big fish and baby could swallow them and whatnot. And I was like, what? And then he walks away and I rest my case. And then beat just looks at him and goes like, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> no more questions? When I was just thinking, oh my God. Dude, this uh, is not so rip on Joe it. Hour. This is not rip on Joe Hour. It was no, a no, fun no. Yeah. It was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, I mean, it was like literally, I, uh, just before we kept uh, started recording, I was uh, telling to Skiz, I think that was uh, probably one of the best impromptu acting yeah. bits that ever happened in Hermitcraft history. Oh. Because it's like, it literally, as I said, we don't script stuff like that. There was literally no conversation between right. us before the court case. Right. We walked, like, literally, I switched on my computer, sat down, and there's the court case. Like, yeah. And then we just went. I mean, big props to B-Dubs, right? Yes. For providing, uh, I mean, B-Dubs, I mean, we're talking about Minecraft and the old school guys. To me, B-Dubs is one of the most talented and most gifted entertainers. Like, he could be a stand-up comedian or whatever he's a pretty shy person in real life funnily enough so that's why he probably cannot be a stand-up comedian but you know um for this youtube stuff man this guy mm -hmm. so good. from his building skills he's also somebody that kept on evolving he went through hard times and came back with a vengeance man and totally inspiring and the scenario he provided for us there was just gold right it was perfect it was whenever there was 
he he is a master in 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 um, controlling the comedic flow, right? If there was a little bit of a downswing or so, he would come in with something insane. All of a sudden, he, you have an advertisement for his bamboo shop out of the blue. Yes, <laughs> dude, it was so you know, good. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Was so, and, and not to mention, like I actually learned something about B Dubs is that because uh, I I've I obviously put him on a pedestal. We don't need to go down that angle but i i like him very very much and when we were doing this oh, yeah. there was a time where when uh when joe went up to cross examine and he was going down a path and i had done some research beforehand in regards to certain common objections and what their definitions are and uh, he was sitting there doing it and it was all in jest obviously but i but one of the key things is when they're when somebody's cr examining somebody you want to break up their flow as much as possible and so i he was like maybe 10 seconds in and i and i said objection argumentative and i was like now this might upset b dub my brain was like i hope this doesn't upset b dubs because he's gonna be like dude this is not a real court i'm not prepared for that mm -hmm. dude i said objection argumentative and b dubs jumps up and he goes oh we have our first objection okay skiz heads or tails and he has a randomizer <laughs> that de that deter yeah, that determines dude. if it's sustained or overruled i'm like dude he's thought of everything yeah. and that's when i was yeah. like yeah, yeah there will never be a doubt in my mind again when yeah it comes you guys to talking about like joe kind of having this off the wall uh defense for you if you think about it, it's 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 perfect for the, our world, our content creation world, right? Because yeah. had it been a legit court case with real arguments on both sides, probably would have been a little boring to watch, right? Like most yeah, court cases, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are. But then you guys come in and you got these zany defense for for Doc. You got B Dubs, the judge, doing <laughs> randomization on whether or not to accept the. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. And the setup was nice. Then you know it worked. Like I'm uh, my character, right? Is more like I'm the serious guy and don't. Don't mess with the goat and you know and then i have this completely ludicrous lawyer <laughs> like uh, that's already uh, uh, you know and then you top it with uh, skis coming in like uh, you know ready to to uh, sue the supreme court or whatever you know that's like took crazy the bar exam before the recording yeah, pretty much exactly you know and so that created a really nice uh, set up you know to just have one laugh after the other yes. and I have, like i sat there I'm like tearing up during the uh, uh from laughing you know not because it was so sad yeah. I, I'm, oh it's so that. funny it was during so the, funny during the court case i literally had tears running down my eyes <laughs> like because i had to <laughs> laugh from it was, yeah it was fun i'll tell you what and those I, are the moment i would like to see yeah. the real world take a, a page out of the book of b-dubs for their actual courts because i would love it if in real world the the judge could throw snowballs at the the plaintiff so or the many, defendant like, you know the whole court case at rounds it goes like round one two three yes it was a boxing match and everything else. but i was like what uh, yeah uh, yeah that was those are the fun moments yeah, I was, uh, yeah. but, the, but, you know, you, you bring us up and we talked about, uh, the depths that Minecraft has and, and what it does. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a question. I legitimately have asked every uh, guest we've had, who's a Minecraft player. Um, what, what does doc want from Minecraft? What do you want in regards to, what do you want to see it have next? What additions would you like to see? Uh, you know, I always talk about, I want enchanted boats, right? Stuff like that. What does doc want? You know, and here comes the bit that ties into the question of uh, when we had in part one about burning out and blah, blah, blah. Somehow with the hive mind in the background, I created something that no matter what Minecraft version I play, we will find something, man, and mm. create something. So since that realization set in a few years ago, I don't care what they add. I literally don't care. Mm. As long as they don't break the game in a sense of making it only like the only thing I would say is don't add only decorative stuff. Oh. Like if you add things, it always should have a double use kind of or maybe even more. So, for example, I always make fun of the camel, right? The camel <laughs> to me is a thing is one of these things that Minecraft doesn't need. The camel <laughs> is literally like we have it in the game now for I don't know how long. I a camel anywhere man nobody uses that and why because it literally the only thing it was it was derpy and was cute and they wanted to do something fun but other than that it can't do nothing man the camel is pointless and clutter like that we don't need as long as they add stuff ever so often at least that adds some depth to the game we are golden and then i don't have no specific wishes aside of yeah okay ascent 
a renewable sand. Uh, <laughs> <where you can. laughs> so what is it with you in the sand, yeah. Doc? Like this, is, this has been a thing since season nine. Um, I, I, there was the whole to dupe sand and not dupe sand, and then you know that whole debacle. And now you've turned it into a bit of a, a storyline. I want to yeah. know once and for all, Doc. Is this a character? Are you actually mad about the sand? <laughs> Ooh, he's pausing. Oh, wow, he's got this guy's pausing. We put not, him on the spot. I no, I, I for this. no, 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 no. I'm in my book, right? The way I in, dream to play Minecraft is any exploit that is possible, I want to use. I love that, mm -hmm. like breaking the game and making weird things. And that's when I'm not allowed to do that, right? It definitely hampers my fun. So I'm not mad about shoveling sand. I'm also not really mad that I can't do this because, well, you know, we have a group and we try to find somewhat common ground and we have pretty loose rules, <laughs> if any, right? So I think other people are more passionate about not duping anything that I am passionate that I really want to dupe no. sand. I just want to, I just want to use uh, these exploits. That's it, right? <clears throat> so, but I respect that if somebody really is irked on by me duping sand, I would not like they, you know, then I'd rather think, okay, then let's make a fun play out of it, right? And uh, develop the, it into the sand shoveling and with the hourglass <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, and it's a fun, fun thing. And um, I'm already planning to <laughs> try to bend the rules there again in a different way. Um, just uh, <laughs> for the fun, but I'm not really mad about not being able to do sand. Or, uh, but yeah, it sounds like it sounds like you know you took the situation and you turned it into a fun way to make make content, make a new storyline, <clears throat> make a character um, behavior almost behind <coughs> it. You know, get yourself um, that that kind of like motivation to do something different um, with it, right? Like you have the big hourglass and you're. I, I I actually had to pace uh, with sand the other day for some of your logs, I think. And so, like, it was very interesting to see, like, oh, here's how he spun this thing that a lot of people could have looked at as, like, a, a negative or maybe something that they actually thought you were truly upset about. And like you said, we're a group, right? So we have to find um, common ground. We have to well, sometimes make sacrifices for each and, other. And, and, and then, yes, of course, of you know, some personal stuff there is this, too. You know, for example, when I did the sand thing, right, and it got brought up in the meeting... <laughs> There was, for example, Etho, right? And he explained his experience when he found out it was stupid sad. And I found this so funny. Right? <laughs> he goes like, and then I watched your video. And then I said, ah, oh, he's joking. He's not going to switch that thing on. And then he actually switched on the sand tube. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, that got Etho so good, you know? And I was like, oh, man, I need to push that further. And, you know, and, you know, and then I just out of, yeah, yeah, having fun a little bit there with Etho. I also took a really strong stance that I really want to do this, you know, because you know Etho about his game, right? Etho, he's very particular how he plays as well, and very uh, Minecraft means a lot to him, right? And he has set in stone rules. And poking him there, he says the same as me. Then you know he take it serious, right? <laughs> if you chop out his corners in the nether portals all the time, eventually it will get to him. You <laughs> yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. 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 We all have So it. with we the sand tubing, it was like Esau's reaction was one of the main reasons where I really thought, man, I mean, I'm going to try to push this a little <laughs> bit further and, you know, uh, have a bit of fun with yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Start poking. Start poking. Them yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it's it, not only, you know, one sided, right? Often people say, oh man, all the hermits constantly poke the gold and why, uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I, I call for it and I give people enough reasons, if sometimes behind the scenes, sometimes on screen to poke me a bit. Because yeah. I'm having fun with that. I like to be cheeky and, you know, goof <clears> about. You do. And yeah. it, you have a. Uh, you have a history of you, you do a 10 X retribution. So if somebody, <laughs> if somebody were to like poke you in the shoulder, you, you might put a shotgun in their mouth. Like that's how you come back. <laughs> so, so I, it's, and it's all well and good. It's all, it's all in jest. It's all funny. We had a good, great, actually I'd argue a great moment in the beginning of the season with big salmon. And then how you lured beef and I in and had that giant explosion. It was a great, great content generator. No question. But I got to ask, is docked a little bit like that outside of the Minecraft world? Do you do you come back way stronger, like over the top retribution when wronged? Mm. 
Hmm. <laughs> he's thinking. It's a good question. He's thinking about all the bodies we're, that he's buried. We're throwing up some hard balls <laughs> yeah. in part two. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> nah, it, let's say this. About myself, I'm very, like, it's hard to offend me and mm. really get me mad, but I'm fiercely loyal. And in real life, when somebody trash talks my friends or my friend would be attacked even or something like that, I would immediately, I strongly react. That is something I can't, like, I'm, this is my group, nobody be touching this, right? This yeah. is, so somebody, I don't watch any videos criticizing Hermitcraft or anything like that because that would be, like, I'd be, <laughs> if I meet this person IRL, they in for a treat, you know, <laughs> 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 in yeah. such videos or what. Like, I am, yes, there I would react, but for me personally, this is more, yeah, as I said, the more the but cheeky side and the sure. funny side and um, it gives me good reason to do things right the more mad i get uh, the more hulk uh, power comes and then the hive mind gets hyped up and we try to strike as you said come back 10 times it is a, a way to channel creativity um and also something maybe on a psychological level like from the days when i was doing professional sports right michael jordan uh, t- tells these stories where he took it personal and it's really like that. On an elite sports level, everybody is so good to set yourself apart. It's only mind games, right? So you got to be able to lock on and find the enemy. And even sometimes you make up a story in, in your head, right, to, <laughs> to really get the motivation. I'm going to take this guy down. And maybe that's a bit of a leftover from the sports days, but it doesn't affect me in real life. In real life, I'm rather mellow and... Uh, I'd also be a people watcher like uh, Skiz. Sure, if you trigger me, you see my mouse keeps going and going and going. This is the longest podcast in history. But um, <laughs> I, I like can it. also <clears throat> uh, sit back and just watch and let others do their thing. See, you know, and here's so. why I think you and I, we haven't had a whole ton of collaboration, but we've every bit of collaboration we've had on the Hermitcraft server, in my, in my opinion, I can only speak for myself, has just been very, very very delightful for me. You you are a good fit for me, and here's why. Not long ago, uh, Impulse and I did a, another a podcast called you know uh, we're still idiots or whatever we called it, where we talk we tell some stories of us being foolish. And <laughs> and there is a thing about me that I love to play with fire. And one of the stories I talked about was when I ca- happened upon a rattlesnake and I tried to see how close I could get. Very very dumb stuff. That's very similar with you. So when I antagonize Doc, <clears throat> my comments are chock full of people like, dude, you don't know what you're doing. Like you do not want to mess with doc. And I'm like, you don't know who you're talking to. I love to play with fire. I, I, in the real world, I played with a rattlesnake. I can play with an, with an unhinged Minecraft character in Minecraft. So it's created some really good dynamic between the two of us that, in my opinion, we haven't even quite fully explored just yet. You know, and I, no, and, I, and I think we had some fun yeah. stuff in the beginning. We've had some stuff in the beginning. You actually you actually said to me at one point, do you know who you're talking to? Because I made like a subtle threat. It was really funny, you know, and I was, and I, I like to play. I like to play. I poked the bear. I, 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 yeah. I really played with the rattlesnake. So I'm excited to see where uh, the skiz and doc dynamic might go in the future, because I think the court case may have been the catalyst to something potentially bigger. We'll have to see. It, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I sometimes forget that, like, it feels like you two have known each other and collaborated on stuff for a long, long time. But really, this is his this first like full right. season, like <clears throat> collaborating with you, Doc. But it, and it happened like that that quick. Episode one, you guys were already you know, having right. yep. this dynamic building, this this kind of storyline straight yep. away. Um, I I thought <laughs> that the funniest moment was when you misheard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I misheard say, him. Oh yeah, you misheard <clears throat> him, and, and it said you he, you thought he said he doesn't like to do anything. Yeah, but he said he doesn't like to do editing. Is that because you cussed or something like that? Didn't Skiz cuss? Yeah, yeah. And I then s- Doc, you were, you were mad that you were gonna have to cut that out. And yeah. that meant yeah. editing. But he heard you say because of your accent. I don't. Anything. Yeah, I don't like to do <laughs> editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and I went down this rabbit and hole. Now it became a big thing, man. Yes. Like I'm running with it. You know, it fits with the whole automation theme, but. <laughs> Also, yeah, it's it's funny. Yeah, it worked out, yeah. and, and I was the only one who heard it wrong too, because they <laughs> they've all it was uh, so it was, it was Cleo and uh, uh, Beef and who else was with us? Is that it? 
somebody else. Oh, T- Tango was with us, and they yeah. all they've been working with you for a while. So yeah, yeah when they it, know my mumblings, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and so I said I I I became a. a totally false character of the guy who who is the CEO of Big Salmon hearing about Doc talking trash and saying, son of a bitch. And, you know, and that was all <laughs> it was. And then he starts going, oh, bleep, bleep. Oh, come on, man. I don't like to do anything. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so I went down that path and that beef was the one to correct me. He said, no, dude, he said editing. And we all just had the best laugh. But it, like you said, it became something. <laughs> that was episode one. Uh, is that true, though? Is that true? You are you don't like editing or... Or was it, was that no, just in the moment no. you were just joking? It was, no, it was already, you know, it was an ongoing scene because my videos are so long all the time, right? Um, and uh, it was a meme in the community already. Ah. Doc doesn't like to do editing, whereas <laughs> I don't think that's true, right? My videos probably have uh, the same amount of cuts like most other hermits do, but I use longer segments. Mm-hmm. And that mainly comes from the point A, I do one video a week, right? So I got to pack a lot of stuff, and especially when the ore snatcher thing is going on, then you pack in a cool creative build you want to do, and then a court case, poof, quickly we have an hour. Um, and I need to explain a lot because it's mostly super complicated redstone stuff, right? And you cannot just shoot a pick to the world border and then be like, ha ha, <laughs> here it is. You know, people want to know. If I don't explain, then all the comments will be flooded by people saying, how did you do that? Can you please... Ex-? So... <clears throat> It, it comes with the kind of content I kind of make um, and also with the style I prefer, honestly, a little bit. I don't want it to so fast cut and fast paced. I think, for example, Google Shorts is going to be the downfall of human, human you know, civilization. Because, uh, <laughs> exaggerated, of course. Yeah, but, that's a little extreme, you know, but all right. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, um, because, yeah, it's bad. You know, like... Uh, yeah, Too what fast we call it pace. popcorn brain. Yeah. The the like the yeah. TikTok, the YouTube Shorts is is uh, so uh, you're you're giving a like a, a refreshing way of like say, longer form content, like like allowing people to take in your experience in whole almost. Not not every you minute. You said you have lots of cuts as well, but you're yeah, giving them yeah, you're yeah. giving them more, like more that they can they can get the more information, they can learn more about you. I, I, could, I know you talk about. I could your streamline. Self. I could streamline a bit. Let's say. I know, like, let's if it's a 45 minute or an hour long video, probably I could trim 10 minutes out by having more sharp cuts. And then maybe uh, there's a repetition here and there. I'm aware of that, right? I'm looking at it. But uh, then I feel when I start with this, where does it end, right? I, it's a, dang, a slippery slope. People then get used to this quick cuts and blah, blah, blah. And then you're always doomed to edit like an absolute madman. Uh, well, sometimes, like the court case, right, I literally didn't edit anything <clears throat> in the whole thing because it was a perfect flow. You could probably make it more funny or more TikTok funny by have, cutting uh, 30 seconds out in between or whatever, and then there's one joke after the other. But mm. I don't like it like that. I want it to be a bit of an emotional roller coaster ride. You build tension, and then so there may be a little bit of a drop off again, and then all of a sudden, the left field boom another spike and by slowing down the pace a bit you can create a a bit of a a more broad dynamic i feel emotions you want to touch in a video sad and people you know like when i got like a lot of comments in the video about the law lawsuit said man i really feel bad for dog man it was really sad the poor guy but on the (laughs) other hand man it's gonna be great you know uh two weeks of sky block or you know so (laughs) <laughs> it's great to see that uh, you touch touch people's emotions there and uh, to really carefully touch people's emotions takes also a little bit of time. And if your goal is to only make people laugh, yeah, cut cut away, right? I think, but the, if important you thing, have people, I think the important thing behind uh, what you're saying is like you're sticking to the style that you enjoy making, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's important as a content creator yeah. to, to, to stick to tr- one's true self and like at the end of the day, it's your video that you're putting out. It's 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 I mean it's your art. There's no repetitions in there and whatnot, right? Everything you hear in that 45 minutes of me rambling along is new information. Like uh, it relate, I explain something, new developments, new stuff happens, and it's one video a week. You know, I could also split that if you take that one hour long video and do twice a week, which I can't really do with the kids' schedule and all, right? Then you would have two videos for half an hour. 
but it's not how my production flow works, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Like I can throw in a few hours over the week and there and there, and then towards the end of the week, I can finish the product. Towards Thursday, I need to be done and then finish uh, Thursday night, Friday morning, finish the video editing process and whatnot. I cannot do a video in the midweek and do the editing process twice. I can't, mm. time-wise, not doable. So therefore, it has to be longer, but theoretically, it could be two videos. As a viewer, like I'd last... say there is an advantage, like uh, knowing every Friday there's going to be a doc video. But yeah. at the same time, I wonder, does that put any extra pressure on you to hit that? No, for some weird reason, man. Yes, I also done it's done, put it out. That costs way more stress to me than having a schedule, man. Like mm. I have a, with the kid now, right, with the family situation changing, having a bit of a... Fl set flow really helps a lot like for for my partner to plan around it as well when i'm i available when not i cannot just say hey sorry yeah today you got to watch the little one again because uh, i felt inspired and want to <laughs> work all night right so and then now it gives me a peace of mind and i have a good workflow i know what helps is for example i know tuesday i should be already at least have the prototype done and know Blah, blah, blah. If I don't have that done, I know I'm behind already. So then mm. I know, hey, step up your game faster, uh, no sleep tonight or whatever, right? So I can balance it out nicely. It's a good thing for me. <clears throat> and it seems the audience, I also underestimated that, do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Fix, they know on Friday at 4 Central European uh, time, my weekend starts with a one hour documentary <laughs> of, documentary, you know, documentary. Nice. no there's not there's very clear value to what oh, he's yeah. saying we do that with the podcast we we, this is every yeah, yeah. this will be episode 102 and that's 102 consecutive fridays where we haven't missed a single friday yep. and because of that mm -hmm. now, now that he thinks about it now that he's got me thinking about it rather uh, I, I edit these podcasts and I know it's got to come out on Friday. I know exactly what he's talking about is that if, if mm. Wednesday rolls around and I'm not at a certain point in the edit, I know if I'm ahead of the game or if I'm behind the yeah. game, I know which yep. dial to turn to make sure I, I, I hit the damn date. Whereas the other one, I'm just like, I just want, I just want to get out as many as possible. And so I always feel like I'm behind. Yep. So it's, yep. this is very, this is, this is a Maybe it's also a helpful tip for, you know. When we talked about this burnout and people, you know, having trouble and blah, blah, blah. I found I took quite a bit of pressure and stress out with that schedule. Because, yeah. as I said, it gives me peace of mind after a few, after you do it a while, you know, you flow and then you can judge if you're good or not, right? And that's really helpful. You're not always feeling, okay, I need to do this, 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 this. You know, okay, I did my part for today. I know I'm on the right track, you know, it helps me, yeah. you know. That's a good. Of less stress. I need to, I, you know what it is, is I have this, like these delusions of grandeur that I can somehow create more than I can create. I can come up with two episodes a week. And especially with my current situation, that's just not going to happen anytime soon. So what ends up happening is sometimes a week and a half or two weeks goes by. If mm -hmm. I just said, you got to do it once a week, then I, I'm probably going to see a better turnout and the audience, it starts to lock into their brain and when they can depend on the next one and just, in, instead of just yeah. hoping that they're going to open up YouTube and boom, there it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. You just get those comments. Friday. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah that well, I mean, sorry, we're already competing with, I don't know what they're going to do, what your viewers are going to do when our podcast comes out the same day, you know, our podcast with you, part one and part two now. The same day your video it's comes gonna out. It's going to be a dark day. Obviously, right now, when we're done with the podcast, you go over to my video and leave a comment and say, hey, I just want to watch the podcast. You're <laughs> the you best. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jump one or the other. No, that's a good, that is a good <laughs> idea, though. Like, <clears throat> In fact, let's see. What I want to do this. I, I'm curious because we drop at 7 a.m. our time. And you drop at what it's time? It's like the same time, I think. Uh, what time same you... time or an hour later? Like it's it's four uh, Central European time, so, so three hours before we started recording. Well, what time? Day. Yep. <laughs> Is it the same time? The exact same time. Oh my! So our video, the podcast, and the doc videos come out the yeah, same minute every week. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad. We should we should stagger that, man. We're cannibalizing each other. We're cannibalizing each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever, do you ever yeah. think about that? Like, um, there's so many hermits, uh, you know, 27 
And, you know, sometimes if we all have a big court case or whatever, in this case, you guys staggered the court case. Yep. But sometimes there's big events that we all record and it's like there's an embargo date yeah. and, time, and we all yeah. release at the same time. And those ones like always get the least amount of views um, for me personally. Uh, yeah, yeah, do you yeah. ever do you ever find yourself like trying to navigate those waters and like oh, the only the time I, yeah the only time I find uh, I'm annoyed by it is when uh, last life extra life is running because it comes out on Friday and when extra life or last life then runs it completely destroys the views on, on the hermitcraft episode so because there's... a lot of people you know pay attention and then there's also lots of videos coming out all throughout the Friday so I think last season I actually released Saturday then. To wow. kind of uh, circumvent uh, the the hype that comes out, you know, that is because people only have so much time. I understand. Not, you know, trying to uh, trash talk uh, extra life or last life or whatever. It's just literally eight, nine videos come <clears> out, <throat> right? And people are engaged. You cannot expect them to also watch another hour of uh, random Hermitcraft by Doc, right? So yeah, that's the only time when I think about it. Other than that, I just think, man, it's my Friday spot at four. I release there, whatever. What can I do? But yeah. I, I feel it though, right? Yeah, if yeah, we all do. Sometimes it, it somehow coincides and then um, not only if it's the same content, also if it's completely different, but four or five hermits all of a sudden release on a Friday afternoon happens here and there. And then I can see it in the views. Or, you know, people have their favorites sometimes. Oh, there's no hermit. At least there's a doc video or so or the other way around. We share a lot of audience. Mm hmm it's a good yeah. thing and uh, also partially maybe not so good right mainly good though i mean mainly good I, I like what you're saying it's mainly good but there is a cannibalistic uh, component to it that is undeniable and it's a it's a ride that we've all had to find our, our yeah. own <laughs> place to just but, try to tolerate you know look at it like that realistically the only people we're competing with is other hermits there's nobody in the whole youtube that is remotely close to what we built in this Minecraft space, none, by far not. So, who do you want to compete with? With uh, twenty-seven <clears throat> of your friends and try to become better, Very good. or with all these fools out there on the YouTube? <laughs> and like, and like you said, like yeah. like we also inspire each other with what yep. we release, yep. right? So, you know, I I watch B Dubs' last video and I, and I I find the the cinematics that he's doing very interesting. His um, playing with with audio and, and things like that. And I'm like, okay, he's stepping up the game again. So then oh, I, yeah. I want to do it. You know, then I go to, to make my videos and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this a little you bit. You can to... already tell yeah. some mm -hmm. hermits are picking up already. I saw in the last Tango video when he did the build montage, I think it was the video where he made the mushroom the, the light uh, you know what is it called Fun, uh, fungi, the nether, the fun, fungi, the fungi fungi light fungi, yeah. and in his time lapse there he also used speed ups tactic only showing small clips yep. of uh, him placing blocks and going away from the time lapse so a lot of people know oh, he's copying beat ups no it's not that's exactly what happens between us man like we inspire each yes. other and if, if if somebody sees man this is cool. I want to try it too. Do you think BDEVs would ever go and say, ah, oh, Tango, this is my style. You can't do this. Hell no. You know, you'd be proud because, hey, you found something that other hermits found cool. Yep. Of course, there are certain <clears throat> things, right? We have also a certain respect amongst each other. There are certain things. I don't know if all of a sudden everybody would start building their redstone now on diamond or yeah, blocks. That's, or so. that's that would, different. That would be and we weird. know it. That's different, right. and we know it. It's the same. Yeah. It's the yeah. same shtick I've been having with B Dubs of me being the assistant sleep master. The whole thing has been yeah. I, I I'll take over when he's not here, and it's coming off like I'm challenging him, and that's great. When in reality, I'm like I'm I'm never coming after that position. That is a B Dubs no. thing. That is yeah. a thing yeah. for B Dubs, and so I'm never coming after yeah. that position. Obviously, because that's stupid on my part. It hurts his. It's, it's we understand yeah, the line. Just, you know, mutual respect, and uh, you know, how long are we working? How does it work? That's because everybody keeps these things in mind. You know, we can poke each other. We sometimes debate strongly and have opinions, but there are certain things, certain lines nobody ever oversteps. You know, mm -hmm. respect. We just get it. That, uh, we just uh, get it. You know, I, in fact, I, I talk to Impulse all the time about this is that I started on day one of my first day in Hermitcraft doing bloopers and BTS, right? And, and it's been a very, it's been a staple of my episodes. 
Well, then I haven't I haven't seen it, but my communities tell me that there's other hermits who are doing that. And they ask me, does this upset you that they're I'm like, what? No. First of all, just for the record, I didn't invent the word blooper that's been around for (laughs) generations. And I said, but if they're doing that because they think it's cool that I feel like that's a lot of respect. I feel very. Yeah. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's more in the uh, Asian Eastern cultures, right? Uh, Here, uh, sometimes people say, hey, copycat, copycat. I don't see it like that. If I would start complaining about people copying what I've been doing over the years, that's the only thing I would do. Worry about how people, you know, try to outdo you by stealing your thing or whatever. Who cares, right? Uh, um, This is a YouTube space here, right? Uh, We don't have copyright. Uh, We don't we don't play like that right? right and you can you can see it's always like i don't know then this this waves of things that are super successful the hundred days i survived the hundred days yeah. there was this guy who tried to sue for the for the thing and that did go well yeah. right i mean yeah. now of course it's a super successful brand right these hundred days <clears> i survived the hundred days in my hardcore i mean if you search minecraft right now i guarantee you that six of the ten top hits is literally some 100 days videos in Minecraft. I mean, what works, works. People will run with it. And I'd rather share my knowledge and the successful strategies with my other hermits than somebody else coming for us as a group. Yeah, right? I mean, so. we, like, like you said, like we've, we've gone past the point of just being colleagues or even competitors with each other to where we're friends. And so we're constantly sharing um, oh, yeah, information all the time. with each other to help lift each other up. Because like you yeah, said, I we mean, share it's the like, mods, uh, yep, you yep, know, uh, yep. uh, beat ups uh, several times. Other hermits have asked beat ups how his uh, settings are and how, what he uses for the fork because everybody loves beat ups would always go like, yeah, I'm used this and this. And if you have any troubles, uh, hollow at me, I'll explain. You know, it's like there is no envy uh, or, ge- or gatekeeping or something like that in the group. We don't tolerate that. Yep, yep. Everybody who would do that, it is, is a self-regulating thing. Not a, You know, we're not and nobody's perfect but we keep each other in check and uh yeah we have mutual respect and i think that's Mm. why we've we've been able to um have such a successful uh group for so long and hopefully you know i don't see anything happening that's going to change that as long as as long as we keep uh being as tight as we we are and keep respecting each other the way that we currently do and have been for, for years and we keep bringing in people like we've been really selective about who we bring in as yeah. well like people there ask might be us all the time to that. Mm-hmm. Ne- you never know Joel right and, and the skis now might be the last hermits ever invited to the group or not who yeah. knows right it's like we're also aware of you know you cannot infinitely expand this group because uh, what we created here is extremely dang- difficult already to manage you have to see you we have stronger personalities. We have extremely huge channels. We have more timid people. We have people that are uh, in the background doing a lot for the server, but never getting that praise. And, you know, keeping it all that everybody feels halfway comfortable, there's always going to be somebody a bit upset about something or whatever, like in a normal. And, you know, there's limits to that. There's only so much. Um, so mm-hmm. who knows right, uh, how where this hermit craft journey will go but uh, for sure it's not like inflation us adding people is a long tedious process yeah and we all don't uh, enjoy doing it because <laughs> it requires digging deep and speaking things that somebody sometimes you know uh, unpleasant topics and things it's, it's a difficult process but so far knocking on wood right yeah. <laughs> as the last example shows with skis so far we've been doing a decent job there yeah we don't take it lightly so, you know because we know oh, how important oh, oh. it is to keep the cohesion of the group and one bad choice of bringing in somebody that creates some sort of uh rupture in that cohesiveness would would could deteriorate the group to mm-hmm. a point that we wouldn't exist anymore so yeah we yeah. are we're we we have a lot of talk <laughs> and and <laughs> a lot of back and forth and like you said it's not always easy we have some difficult mm-hmm. conversations but so far um it is just we've we've made the right decisions you know so like you said knock on wood it, it continues that way if we do end up bringing anybody else ever but uh, yep. it, it's been it's been great, like being part of a, a such a big group that really does care for each other and yeah. get along the way we do. And I think that is, like you said, very 
uh, it's not a normal thing and it's not an easy <clears throat> thing to build. No. But I think it, it, you're touching on something yeah. here is that I, it, 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 and I think everybody feels this way, but when I can do something that's going to help somebody else's video in the slightest bit, that feels awesome. Like, I love it. I love that feeling of, of being able to contribute in that way. Right. And I mean, if I've, if I have, if another hermit comes up to me and they're like, excuse, I need your help with this. And can you, you know, you're good with words. Can you think you can help me draft this or whatever? I'm like, yeah, I'm all in, you know, because the fact is, and, and I've done mm -hmm. bits with people and then that bit I did with them, like great bits. I didn't even put in my video and I was fine not mm -hmm. doing it because I was like, I actually enjoy uh, the energy of me showing up to just give something to just you. I like mm -hmm. doing that. And then I, and then I go away and I go back to making my video. But the idea that I showed up just for that person just to do this and then stepped away, that is what I see. And, and for the record, I don't think I'm unique. I've seen, I've had plenty of hermits that when I've asked for something, they come give me their time and then they just, and it's not even in their video. They just want to be there. And I'm like, yeah, this freaking group is awesome. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Season, yeah. So season three, you came in um, and you, was season three the NHO? Was that or was that four? Maybe that was four. four. You, I think I think because yeah, then B Dubs and in in Beef and Etho, you four came came over from Minecraft, and all four of you came together. No, you formed, will be happy. You formed yeah. the the NHO, NHO and uh, <laughs> they, so that was stood for the New Hermit Order, mm -hmm. right? And so it was kind of like, you know, the, the, these big dogs from Mindcrack came into Hermitcraft, who was up and coming. And, and, and you guys had this fun, fun bit about like, we're going to show these guys how it's done. Do you remember? Do you remember those days like vividly or is that all just a, a blur now in the past? Well, it was funny. It was uh, obviously back then, right? The, it was the first steps for Hermitcraft also into a more role playing uh, storytelling elements. And uh, back then, when we first started the NHO thing, we, you know, we had we had learned some things from Minecraft, right? And now you come into the Hermitcraft server, and you, you know what needs to change, quote unquote, to take us now to the next level. Mm -hmm. But you're the new guys on the block, so you don't come here. You're grateful that this group of people accepted you as as a member and you don't want to come around and be like hey by the way we as minecrackers we know how to do it. so how do you do it in a playful way you know without offending everybody just showing by example kind of was the idea right and then we did the nho thing and it did ren you know ren for example quickly jumped on it he was one of he because he also thought this is maybe something but then it the whole storytelling thing didn't really fully catch on and then with the the joining of green right mm -hmm. who then said okay we're gonna let's try the storytelling more that's there's a lot to it and so on and then more people followed along and then we we, we learned our ropes as we mentioned in part one right first we we needed to script stuff more in a sense of plan a lot of planning and it was super exhausting we needed to talk so much about mm -hmm. okay now when the story goes there and we needed to learn about basic storytelling elements there always needs to be a why. What is your motivation to do this and that? And, you know, and it was this this way. And I thought, yeah, we back then realized we also had elements like that already in Minecraft, right? We had a lawsuit there and there was the B team with Generic B and B double O who were really experimenting a lot back in the days with free form acting and creating a group, group dynamics on a server. That's all new stuff, you're right? Everybody's taking that for granted these days, but it had to be learned. Man, none of us is a script writer, mm -hmm. Hollywood storyteller or whatever. It was literally trial by doing. Yeah. And that's the, the experience we had. It is good to create p antagonizing parties maybe uh, because that creates tension that creates potential to evolve something uh, allied people against this that cross you know how it goes and uh, yeah that was the basic idea of the nho back then just to kick this off mm -hmm. to take us to the next level and I think, um, yeah, it really then took off when Green came and said, yeah, let's really push that. And then, you know, everybody trusted Green. He was such a huge, successful YouTuber, right? 
back then when he joined the group he we uh, at least people thought okay he must know something <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah. Uh, we because in comparison of course right he was way bigger the uh, numbers wise yeah. now talking yeah we experienced as not a, as a personality change. very humble guy right yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah yeah he changed the way that we were doing things um in a very positive way like you said we had to find our legs but um, yeah. and, and now we have. And I think, you know, we owe a lot of that to, to Green coming in and energizing us to try some new things. To try um, again. Yeah. 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 So the fi season five was a bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we don't talk a lot about season five because <laughs> like it's not that we were burnt out or anything. We had just kind of um, lost our way a little bit in in the collaborative space. And, yeah. and it, it became very Hit isolated. Yeah. It, and it yeah. happens, right? Like, like that, that happens anytime you're creating art, like people will hit walls and stuff and, and have creative yeah. blocks and things like that. So it really did kind of like break that wall down for us, bringing in a fresh, uh, a fresh perspective like we did with green in season six. But I got to say my favorite thing that came out of season six was the hermit gang rap. And one thing <laughs> I don't think a lot of people know is Doc, you <laughs> you were like the leader of making that happen. Like, do, do you remember taking the helm when we came up with this weird idea of making our raps? Or maybe it was even you that came up with the idea. I can't remember. But like you took the helm and you said, we're going to make this a banger. And you were the one. And, and like you said before, you're like, you're really good at having um, resources around you and collaborating with people and getting to know, having building your network. Somehow mm -hmm. you had people in your network that helped make hermit gang oh, yeah. the banger it is can you tell Getting me about how you did into... that because i've always actually been curious myself how you put how you masterminded oh. that rap well obviously i'm not a rapper <laughs> <laughs> so um, i'm a white middle-aged dude from germany so <laughs> obviously when you want to do a decent bit of hip-hop you need help right and i knew i had a few guys on my patreon service galley the kid and so on that that were freestyling and i knew about that and they were also producing beats on the, in their free time and that's pretty much a resource i said dude i need to make a a song and they were deep into the hermitcraft fandom so it was also easy to partially ghostwrite or at least give a structure right some of the hermits wrote their own um like i told him okay writer we sit together and then let's make this my my verse right mm -hmm. so hermits have some idea where we're going at with this here like the flow and all this then we worked this out together um he pretty much wrote most of my lyrics in the first draft and then we went through changed a whole lot it was a long process and then it was yeah he, Scully also wrote the lyrics for most of the hermits um but i think sisuma did his own and you maybe i changed yeah. up i changed up so i used uh, it as changed a, a i changed lot. yeah i used it as a framework to get me started yeah it was just a, and then, a framework and then, it, and then it was yeah. easy to just swap some things around and put in my exactly. own experience and, and stuff that yeah. i wanted in and i just remember that like like you were basically like hey guys uh we we got this written for us and do what you want with it and then we all kind yeah. of put our own spin on it for the most part but then like yeah. then you got somebody to like develop a beat behind it and all of a sudden i was like whoa like this is actually mm. really good really good now our first version again a lot of people don't know this do you remember our first version actually had wells singing in it yeah and and it, 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 <laughs> it, it <laughs> no, wells, no 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 don't don't mistake doc's expression there is like oh wells was terrible wells is actually a decent singer no, no. it just didn't it, fit. Was, it, was, it didn't fit yeah, the vibe no. that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, we yeah. Had, had had envisioned so you know wells did a yeah, good yeah. job but unfortunately and that was one of those moments where we had to come together and be like you know wells thank you for the, your effort you you actually did really well you did exactly what we were hoping for it's just once we heard it we we're like no this wasn't this wasn't what we wanted the end well, goal of it to be and we were able to pivot know, and, and make it into a full the thing rap. is this right let's face it none of us is a, a real rapper or, or has any part of that culture or uh, knowledge or skills or whatever so it got to be if you want to make a rap it's got to be a parody that was the main thing mm -hmm. but if a parody is only good if it's actually slaps Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. none of us think now we are good music producers or like super rappers or superstars <laughs> in that regards when it comes to making music it fitted well because we caught the right vibe that was a lot of work but with things like that i'm i don't know 
normally I always know what to do when it comes to that. When we started this project, I knew exactly where it needs to be. And that's why it also worked. Mm, sounds a bit weird. I'm not like, you know, this overlord who can figure out, blah, but with certain things, I know exactly what it needs to be. And then my strength is to have people around me that trust me with it. And then I could take the lead a little bit. But when you work with mus musicians, you also got to not suffocate them, right? You, mm -hmm. They got to be free and to work and uh, to be creative. So that was the only challenge there, guiding it a little bit into the right direction so it actually slaps, but we're not <laughs> trying to take ourselves too seriously there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll try to, with some Minecraft YouTubers, uh, <laughs> I, might be, I might be a bit biased, right. but I think we did amazing. <laughs> like, I still yeah, play yeah, I mean, uh, years later. I mean, that was a long time ago uh, at this point, and I still slaps, play and, you know, I'm not saying that none of you guys, uh, you know, uh, some of you guys are really good with uh, rapping as well, man. You are really good, right? And well, love Ren's verse, too. Yeah, Wells Ren, gets a lot of Ren's, credit. <laughs> Ren's bit is obviously insane. To me, that's the best part because he just, you know, <laughs> freestyled it. So, so, yeah, he did great with it. But also falls everybody. Right? Yeah, it, it, I wish, you know, we would have gotten Scar on it. Um, I tried to make a song later than the Man in Black song with Scar, but for <laughs> Scar it's a bit difficult to sing, right, with mm -hmm. his breathing situation and so on. But that is uh, still on my bucket list. I want to make something where Scar can also be involved yeah. in some form or the other. So there I think is he was a, just a, a matter of self-esteem. There yeah. is a chance to, another production is, it could be in the works someday, another yeah, but, you know, gang follow up. The bar is high, right? Yeah. The bar is really high. People always say, oh, you know, Doc is working on another diss track. Doc is with, and I say, nah, man, I'll know the right moment when we need another one. But right, right now I haven't, like, then we do it, but... Then we need to top uh, Hermit Gang, you know. <laughs> That's going to be a tough one. But yeah, it was the perfect moment for that perfect situation. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a backstory. There's, there was the, the no, why, as you I mentioned. Have, I have the biggest, my biggest music dream with the whole group. And that's really cool because we have drum players. That, there's one sitting right mm -hmm. there, right? Both we of have, us. Yeah, yeah. And we have guitar with Sizuma is by now really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, like he's you know how Suzuma is, right? When he's fixated on something, he goes, <laughs> goes crazy. Yeah. So we have this whole metal band, and I'm still dreaming of making some sort of cool metal song with the <laughs> with the group. And then I have this grand vision: when we do HermitCon, we perform it live on oh, stage. Oh my right? god, that would be that so would be epic. so sick. <laughs> that is my, you know, you gotta have these dreams, right? Yeah. And one day Snoop Dogg is gonna join HermitCon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm down for that. that. That would make some very interesting content. I love yeah, you it. You gotta have, you gotta have some dreams. I have <laughs> another dream would be to make a whole episode without any talking, just based on music, some heroic oh. Viking metal. That's my biggest dream. I wanted to do the op for years. I say every when we do a new season, the first episode gonna be like that. It's gonna show my progression with an opera in the background, like, you know, heavy metal opera, obviously. <laughs> but that's, you know, that would require, that's insane. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's a, yeah. Lot, lot, a lot of moving parts there to make something like that happen. Oh, yeah. but, but that's what makes it exciting. Yeah, You know what I mean? Sometimes getting to the other end of creating something like that is, I mean, you, you talk about putting the right people in place. If we rewind the clock a couple decades, unfortunately, um, him and I were we uh, we wrote a drum theater show for mm -hmm. a high school drum line, and in doing so, I I remember like when when we were creating this, there were certain feels that I needed to happen right. And but I can't I don't I'm a drummer. I can write rhythms mm -hmm. all day long, but I'm not a musician. I cannot write melodies. And our pit instructor, uh, his name was Joe, very talented. And trying to get it from my head into his was very difficult, but. When I was walking him through the, I was like, this is exactly what I want the audience to feel. And this is going to be where the cadence is. And this is what I want you to build. But like you said, let them breathe, let them cook. Now, Joe, go do your thing. I've said to you, my piece, go do your thing. And he came out the other side with pure gold. And it was exactly mm -hmm. what we wanted. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, dude, we're on to something. And that's the thing. Well, you I sometimes find people like that, right? Yeah. Where it can work so well together. You can yep. communicate well. Not everybody can communicate with everybody, you know, uh, or, or explain themselves like 
Yeah. It's hard. Empathy. It's hard. You got to understand. And the other thing is you have to be willing and confident enough to let go of control is that yeah. a lot of people don't want to get involved in big projects like this unless they have all the control in the world. When you have to open up, you have to let the people breathe. Like you're saying, let them. You know, that's weirdly, weirdly easy for me because I base my judgment on my pure emotions of people. And so far, if I think this is a good person, I was always right. And then nothing can go wrong. I don't have issues giving my competence away to somebody where I know they're good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like rarely in my life it happened to me that I misjudged somebody so badly that I got really badly disappointed. Yeah. And I gave them... I understand you know, that. I understand that, that very much. That, yeah, that's been, a, that's been a, a thing I had to do all my life. What people need me for is I'm the icebreaker. Mm -hmm. I'm the front and I beat the bullies out of the way. <laughs> I, I, I pave the way. And then behind me, there's a whole army. And they are all Im immensely talented and amazing. But they, they don't have the ability to go ahead. And I'm not afraid to do that. That's not, but I don't want to be the, that leader I just want to be the guy that opens the doors and then the floodgates come and I stand back and then woof, and we take over, man. And that is, I think that's the key. If you want to lead anybody, anything, that's the thing. Trust people mm -hmm. and, you know, take that job. The others are maybe not so strong in. And if you cannot be faced, I don't care. I don't fear a challenge. And then people can thrive if you give them safety and protection or some people just need appreciation. You know how, how powerful appreciation is, honest appreciation. Uh, these days people long for that. We've, you know, in a, people are concerned in a, in a society today and the world is going, to, and this is bad and blah, blah, blah. Because you expose yourself on the social media constantly and you are under this impression it's all negative. And then when some positive feedback for once comes, it's so powerful, even more powerful than it used to be. And really appreciating somebody's work, like the fan artists that make mm -hmm. amazing things, right? People write music or people literally make whole, PowerPoint presentations about the ore snatcher of <laughs> have statistics about every game in TCG that was ever played. Wow. Like Jeez. appreciate that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like appreciate that. Uh, honestly, yeah. it's nice. If somebody does something and gets so invested, honest appreciation is just, uh, I think uh, something that's lacking a lot these days and uh, it's important I think it's also and like I think, I think it's also a yeah. vulnerable, a vulnerable space you have to be in to to um, get help outside. You know, I mean, a lot of like you said, sometimes people just want to like be in full control and do everything themselves. But like, we can be so much better. We can do so much more if we leverage the talents and the skills of those around us. And it's a term you've used yeah. a lot. And I don't know if we kind of explained it at all. When you say hive mind, that's what you're talking mm. about. You're talking about a pool of resources yeah. that are there. Not only is, is probably friends of yours at this point, but like there's, there's a set of skills and, and you guys uh, bang ideas off of, it's kind of like the rap as well. Like if you look at the way, Oh, somebody wrote the lyrics, but then we added our flavor. You also have that kind of back and forth with the hive mind. Exactly. And, and it's, it's, yeah. it's a group of, of friends and colleagues that, that you've, you've made connections with over the years. And I mean, from it started in your early days with the zip crowd crew and Psycraft, and it goes well beyond that. I'm mm. sure. Right. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. and it's something that, um, that you've done a really good job at throughout what I've seen your entire career as a YouTuber was knowing you can only do so much as you, but if you can get help and you can leverage your network, um, you can do so much more and that brings so much more value to and your, it's also your fun. Product. It's fun to, to me. Individual success. I don't know. That doesn't do much for me. Right. If I would like about team success, like together achieving something that is so fulfilling to me, if I can be the guy that puts our team in the position that we can, do, you know, do something great, that is really something that fulfills me. So it's maybe also, you know, everybody needs to feed their own ego in some way as well. So you feel good about yourself and what you're doing in life. And that's my thing. I 
I love to be the guy that gives other people a chance to shine. Maybe I need it to bolster my own ego. I don't know where the motivation for that, but it's an honest driving factor for a lot of things I do. I really enjoy the underdog win. Hmm. or the guy that, you know, nobody pays attention to. That's why mostly the people I shout out in my videos with the crazy contraptions that nobody heard about and nobody, you know, they're not these people that put themselves in the front. And I love to do that, to help them with that a little bit. That's to me, that's valuable. It's fulfilling. I don't know. Yeah. It's fulfilling. It, yeah, there's, it's fulfilling. There's something very fulfilling about having the ability to influence the empowerment of another. And this is something, yeah. and I do this in my own job when I, I, I have, like, I work with a lot of people and developers and, uh, and stuff like that. And when I can see uh, one of the developers is, is just profoundly talented, but also equally as quiet, I, I tend to get kind of vocal on their behalf because it's very important to me that they're getting the credit that they're so very due. So yeah, what, but you got to be careful that with your own feeding your ego and feeling good about yourself, you don't overshadow these people. And so yeah, it looks yeah. like, hey, you know, they are only successful because X, Y, Z is helping them. That's the danger. You got to be stay in the background, man. Open the doors and then shut up. And no, don't I, try I 100% to agree. Take, their, take, their, take their shine. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I 100% agree. If you want agree. them to shine, then really let them shine. That's a sit, though. No. So what ends up happening is at yeah. the end of these projects, the person who gets all the accolades is me because I run the projects. And I'm like, guys, I'm not yeah, doing yeah. anything. This is who you need to be looking at. Right. It, 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 but when you're running the project and your name's associated to it, then when it's done and it was a booming success, you did it. And I tell every time it, when it goes south, then I'm like, yeah, I messed up. But when it when it's a booming success, I'm like, yeah, good news. I didn't do a thing. This is all over here. And that's it. That, but they have this inclination to stay quiet and they don't advocate for themselves. And I feel I, I do feel a sense of fulfillment when I can be that advocation and I can bring them to the front lines and say and I and yeah. sometimes in behind closed doors, I'm like, listen, you, you need to speak up more. You are, you are yeah, providing yeah. incredible value and you need to speak up more for yourself because they, they have a, t t a propensity to be a little quiet and reserved. Yeah, and, and it's important though, uh, because I don't want nobody to thank you for that. That's also very important to me. Like, I don't need people to be thankful to me at all. To me, putting them in that spot that they maybe, you know, can get something out of it is enough. That's, that makes me happy, honestly happy. Like, I don't know recently one of the dcp fan artist members right they broke uh they were close to 1000 followers on twitter and then i gave the last bump you know the last 20 said hey come on follow and uh, you know they were so happy about this like <laughs> what does a thousand followers mean to us these days anymore right we are so these numbers is just uh, weird these days who mm -hmm. knows but they, they were so happy about this and that made me really really happy I was sitting there, I was thinking, man, <laughs> this is nice that I could, you know, do this. And that made me really happy for them. I don't know. Just Well, to, I'll tell you what, yeah. I hope you guys, I hope we, <laughs> I get to say we now, I hope we get another Hermit Gang rap uh, going yeah. at some point, because yeah. I, I would I love to hear be a part of rap. It. Yeah. Yep, you, so know I like to. you know I like doing that. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to write my own, but uh, hopefully <laughs> if that ever happens, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. So yeah, go absolutely. do it. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully there'll be an opportunity. You yeah. know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, while Doc is uh, working on his uh, Skyblock uh, Island, whatever, maybe he'll come up with something, huh? Yeah, because he's got uh, like, two weeks mind. of banishment. Actually, oh, by the time it's this comes out, done with his punishment by this time. Yeah, by the time this yeah. comes out, you'll be over your punishment. But we, we, you're gonna right, love Skyblock right. so much that we'll never see you again. Uh, yeah, this kids uh, and I, we, we, we're the I've masters of Skyblock. Let us know if you need anything. Yeah, we're, we're Skyblock <laughs> people, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> uh, It'll be fun to see fun. what you come up with. But yeah, uh, yeah. oh man, fun times ahead. And uh, this has been such a such a fun ride with you over the last decade. And um, honestly, for me, it's still surreal. I still have these moments where I I remember myself um, as a fan of you you know what i mean before i started youtube and, and having like i said when we started I was having you up yeah, on the tv listen, man. <laughs> when i first met you right and uh, you know tango back then i knew you and to me you were peers oh that's awesome right there was never this like 
I never felt like that ever. It was like, surreal for us, trust me. <laughs> to, yeah, to, the same with Ren and Iskal too. When I met them at Dreamhack, they were also fanboying like crazy. It's like, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you guys, man? We're like, what? We're peers. Yeah. Well, like uh, you said, I mean, like you, like you, like you were just talking about how how you've you know um, given shout outs to the the creators along the way. You had your um, dear Doc that you did back then. In fact, mm. um, my channel got a bump when I think you used a gold farm tutorial that I had done and you'd put it in your world tour or something. Um, yeah. and that, and you gave my channel a shout out and that helped, you know, me get kicked off and growing. Um, you've done a lot for the community. Um, you've done a lot for, for, you know, um, all the content you've created. You've, you've obviously, uh, it's been a long journey, but it just feels like there's still so much passion behind what you're doing. And, um, I, I'm just, I'm I'm honored that you were able to make our show today. Yeah, that yeah. you were able to spend two different hours of recording with us today, and you gave up uh, your night. Uh, and mm. I know you got a family and everything. So um, don't I just want to thank worry. you. Tomorrow is payback. Uh, Karin already said, "Yeah, tomorrow you take the little one to bed." You know that. There you right? go. And I'm going gonna go <laughs> get a massage. <laughs> Give and take in relationships, of course. But um, yeah, man, I, I just I just really do appreciate it. Uh, it. We've been wanting to have you on the show for a while now, and we finally got a chance to. So this has been really cool to sit down and, and just get to know you better. Yeah. Yeah, man. I had a lot of fun. It was cool. Could have rambling on for another three hours, but yeah, I was, you know, seeing impasse. I was like, I, I only clock? checked my watch <laughs> once, and it's only because my daughter has a volleyball game coming up. I know, so I know. here's the deal. This doesn't mean we'll never see Doc on the podcast again. Nope. I think I think with every guest we have on, there's always uh, an opportunity. Skiz and I have been talking uh, about this. Like we we have been like with guests, like doing this kind of uh, you know, let's get to know you. Let's talk about your content creator career. It's been, it's been that kind of like agenda, but there is a realm in where we can sit down and we can talk more about specific things. We can talk yeah, about music. Be, we can talk about gardening, to me per, yeah. you know, whatever to me you want. Personally, that would be more interesting. I'm, I'm honestly, when I'm watching the podcast and I know the origin stories of all the hermits, mm -hmm. I don't need to hear it again. <laughs> I know it's interesting for the audience. I'm glad we didn't go through all the steps I've told a million times, but in the end, you know, I told this story a lot where my origins are, mm -hmm. but I also have a lot of things to say about other topics, of course, and that definitely would be uh, something yeah. we should do down the line yeah. some some someday. Right? Love to have you on to talk about specific subjects. I don't know what it would be just yet, yeah. but um, we will let you know if something comes to mind. So yeah, yeah, sweet, sweet. But again, thank you for your time, man. I know, I know, it's a lot of time, but it was no such a pleasure uh, hanging out with you, man. No, it was, I enjoyed every second. It was fun. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> awesome, man. Thanks for joining us. All right. See you take, later. Take it easy, Doc.